Now to former President Donald Trump. He is in Florida today, but his civil fraud trial does continue in New York City. Let's take a live look here at the courthouse. And new today, Trump's legal team is looking to appeal a pre-trial ruling by the judge in the case that it claims he engaged in fraud by inflating the values of his real estate assets. Trump's lawyers say that they were contesting each and every part of Judge Arthur Ngoran's ruling. This also comes as Ngoran pounded his fist reportedly in frustration with Trump's lawyers yesterday on day three, describing the cross-examination of a witness. The judge called it redundant and ridiculous. The Trump repeatedly accuses the judge, of course, and New York Attorney General Letitia James of playing politics and it's a witch hunt against him, against him. A new report from Newsweek is detailing now how the FBI is reportedly targeting Trump supporters ahead of the 2024 presidential election. News outlet obtaining classified data revealing how federal agents want to pursue and prevent what it calls domestic terrorism. Now, an unnamed senior intelligence official is telling Newsweek, quote, we've crossed the Rubicon. Trump's army constitutes the greatest threat of violence domestically, politically, threats and uh, the reality of the problem. That's the reality of the problem set. That's what the FBI, he says, as a law enforcement agency has to deal with. But whether Trump and his supporters are a threat to national security to the country, whether they represent a threat of civil war, that's a trickier question, and that's for the country to deal with, not the FBI, according to that source. Well, joining us now to discuss this and also the latest on the case in New York, 2020 Trump senior advisor and 2016 campaign manager, Corey Lewandowski. And also with us is Trump attorney Jesse Benal. Gentlemen, welcome and good to have you both with us today. Thanks for having us. Of course. Uh, I'd like to start with you, Jesse, on the legal front. Uh, there's a bit of breaking news. Just uh, about 20 minutes ago, Judge Ngoron made a new ruling uh, in the fraud case, a new order which basically says Trump, Trump Jr., Eric uh, Weisselberg, his accountant, and the Trump Organization controller, Jeffrey McConney, cannot move or transfer assets or even open a business without reporting it to the monitor. A woman by the name of Barbara Jones, who was also special master in the Rudy and Cohen cases. So this seems like a significant move, again, by Judge Engeron, who many people say is not fitting to do this, sort of an activist judge. How hard will this be uh, for the Trump family with this Barbara... Uh, Barbara Jones in the middle of all this. Well, this really does show even more that the motives of this particular judge is simply to go after and get Trump, get not only you know President Trump, but get his family as, as well. Um, try to make it as difficult as possible um, uh, for them to, to continue to even do business. This order doesn't just affect New York. It is theoretically worldwide. It's an extremely overbroad order. It's far past his jurisdiction. I have every confidence that um, he'll be he'll be reversed. But it just goes to show that we really don't have a neutral arbiter here. Uh, we have somebody who is bound and determined to take down Donald Trump. This judge should have never heard this case to begin with. You know, first of all, it's it, his political animus towards President Trump is very apparent. And second of all, um, there is a division of the New York's uh, court system that deal with com with uh, very um, complicated commercial uh, disputes like this one, and that's the commercial division. It yes. should have been sent there. Well, uh, you know, Letitia James <laughs> would not allow that, though. We know that because she wanted her moment here. It is very wide ranging. We're just sort of sifting through it. But you're right. It is not just New York. And they also have to disclose what any uh, extent any third party has an ownership, partnership or membership. So it goes really down to the nitty gritty. All right. Putting that aside, obviously, that is a ruling we're watching here uh, day four. Corey, what do you make of the um, FBI now saying we are looking at Trump supporters ahead of the 2024 election? I will tell you specifically, they do cite it is Joe Biden's words calling MAGA extremists, they believe, are the impetus to this sort of maybe they say riling people up. So, uh, so let me get this straight. The president makes comments that are divisive and negative around MAGA and somehow the FBI twists it to like well, the supporters are going to be a problem even before there's any evidence of that? Bianca, the American people have lost complete faith in the FBI from Jim Comey to, to, to all the way down where we are today. Remember, Andy McCabe and, and the lovers, Strzok and Page, right? We've seen the text messages. Their only objective was to get Donald Trump, to make sure he never became the president. They have weaponized the Department of Justice against conservatives. You know, there has been no prosecution of a member of Congress who just last week pulled a fire alarm to disrupt a government uh, proceeding. 
the same entity that they, they the same laws that they use to go after the January 6 people. And so, you know, what we see is a two tier justice system. The members of the FBI, not just the rank and file, but the leadership, need to completely be gone with. We need to revamp that system because I, and I'm sure the American people, are gravely concerned that we are being targeted because of our political beliefs, something our forefathers are clearly rolling over in their graves because of. Excellent points there. Um, I have the final 20 seconds, Jesse, I'll give it to you. Uh, so Judge Ngorn, in addition to this ruling, also seems like he was being pretty critical of Trump's attorneys for just doing their job. Sounds very contentious there. Yeah, uh, this judge is, I mean, he's also sanctioned uh, these attorneys just for simply doing their job. Um, this judge hates everybody associated with Donald Trump. That's a, and if you look at the other quotes from this judge in the past, it's very clear he's letting his emotions and his politics govern this case, not the law. Jesse Banal, Corey Lewandowski, gentlemen, appreciate your time today. Great to see you both. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you.